Hello everyone, Timer over here, and today we are going to start a new a series for Surviving Mars. We've got ourselves a new expansion for Surviving Mars, and uh, it is the Space Race expansion. So I went ahead, I got that, and we're going to take a look at it. A uh, number of other things, I do also have the, uh, I think it's Colony Design set uh, DLC as well. Um, so I installed that uh, to get a couple more buildings, but uh, we mainly want to take a look at the new expansion and see what it has to offer going forward. It has been a while since I played Surviving Mars. Essentially, I don't think we under I don't think we ever finished properly the last uh, Let's Play, um, which you know, knock on you know, which is not anything new. I I, I do have a, a tendency to do that, <laughs> but. Um, we, uh, we, we sort of stopped short on that and lost track and went elsewhere. Um, but I was playing a little offline of the new Surviving Mars, or Surviving Mars, Surviving uh, Mars DLC Space Race. And it's actually pretty good. They've made a lot of changes, lots of changes since I last played that sort of uh, were little issues that I had with, uh, with uh, things and so on and so forth and gave a little bit more substance to the game. Uh, moving forward so like this is new uh since i last played in our let's play bit way back when when we were playing i think it was astro geologist run through or something um but they actually added a proper tutorial which i've not done um because more or less i just learn as i go but it's proper in here and i assume it's going to be good to to play through that as well if you're a new player um we also have these challenge modes here which is kind of interesting so if we go into challenge mode um that's apparently going to take us into something else unfortunately so challenge yourself to accomplish a specific objective within a time limit mission parameters and sites are predetermined um so research 25 technologies repeatable texts are counted once so on and so forth so these little like game modes here where we can actually, you know, have a set goal ultimately and not just build up and build up. So those are always fun, but I don't know. We may do that uh, as well at some point, but for right now, I do want to start a brand new game and I do want to take a look at, they've added, I think, two new um, sponsors in Space Race, uh, Japan and Brazil. But also they've added a number of new, um, you know, benefits i guess for each sponsor things that weren't in there before now what all these are i can't say for sure i just as i went through a couple of them i noticed some that you know were not in the last um last group here i think our last one we were playing is maybe the the international mars mission i don't know but that's that's really the beginner one um and so on and so forth but like, for example, the Mega Mall. I don't recall that being in, in the launch game, so that's actually new. Uh, but we're not going to worry too much about that. But they are interesting. Some of them actually do have some new interesting um, things. Uh, China has the Tai Chi gar Garden, um, which, you know, all, these, all the sponsors seem to have some unique building now uh, that does some crazy stuff. For example, the Metals Refinery, you actually can convert waste rock into metals which is pretty good uh japan is one of the new ones it's harder than brazil um you start with lower funding in general um as well as lower research per soul well i guess usa international gives you know boost to to research but most of them are sort of low on the low end but it's one of the ones that starts lower at 100 research, um, as well as it has a low uh, rare metal price, but it does have really cool wasp drones, which fly around and are quicker than your regular um, ground-based drones. Uh, it also has automatic metal extractors, which really come in handy, um, as well as you can ship more rovers because the cost and weight are lowered by 50%, so that's really good, as well as some other benefits. Uh, but I think what we are going to do, so we're going to take a look at Brazil. Brazil's a little bit easier. Uh, it's a normal difficulty as opposed to a hard. Um, but it has some kind of cool things. And in my little solo playthrough, I went through as Brazil uh, just partway. I think maybe about 30 souls or so just to get a hang of the new mechanics since I last, uh, last played. And uh, you start with free um, supply pods or large supply pods, I should say. 
Um, so supply pod in general is a new feature of space race that you can send as opposed to a rocket. You can send like a uh, one time use uh, delivery of, of material. And as Brazil, you start with five, but you start with five large supply pods. Um, so that can carry more cargo. Really helpful, um, especially if you play a map like I did, which had some lackluster resources to begin with. Um, so that's nice. And you still only start with one rocket, which is me, but hey, that's that's what it is. So it's a little benefit to have those as opposed to, you know, I think International Mars Mission, you start with two rockets, which is pretty good. Um, is it? that or oh no you know what i'm thinking of i'm thinking of the actual person if you're the rocket engineer you get one extra rocket which is nice but being brazil and having those uh five free large supply pods is pretty good i think by default they cost maybe 200 million bucks in order to buy a, a supply pod which is significantly cheaper than the three million buck price tag of a um, rocket so that's something um and you do get some metals. We'll, we'll deal with them later. But anyway, we are going to play that. The rare metals refinery turn waste rock into rare metals is huge. Huge. Um, so, and as Brazil, you actually do get a pretty high rare metals cost. So that's, I think, where the difficulty comes down a bit is because you can just make a ton of money. Uh, because one of the most annoying things I remember... Um, was the waste rock and I think you could always maybe turn it into concrete. I think there was a technology for that But being able to turn waste rock into rare metals is is really nice um, So if we can get that started, there are other things that we're going to shoot for uh, mission objectives that or I think they're milestones for Brazil that are unique um, that we'll be looking at as well to do that. Uh, as In addition to those specialty unit slash buildings, we're going to be getting colonist grant funding when they arrive on Mars. So we'll get additional money from colonists who uh, join us. So again, more money um, for as Brazil. Passages cost no resources and constructed instantly. Very nice. Very nice, I have to say. Um, things like that as well as like the uh breakthrough text where you actually um can place uh power lines and pipes instantaneously are so nice so convenient um and passages are something new that i never played with in an actual let's play so it'll be interesting to sort of link up our domes that way as well as pretty easily too and finally, colonists suffer no penalties when using passages to work or visit connected domes. So Brazil clearly is all about building up the multi-dome setup, um, as opposed to trying to like you know be more picky about that because we're getting a lot of money, so we can get a lot of shipments of uh, raw materials if we need to, and we have the passages uh, that cost no resources and are constructed instantly, as well as the no penalty when using passages to work or visit connected dome. So that's pretty big. So we're going to be trying to build up pretty extensively um, our our area here. Uh, but that's that. So let's go ahead. We'll deal with Brazil um, as a command profile. So again, I, I'm not sure some of these look newer. City mayor looks new. I don't know if it actually is, but I don't recall seeing that previously all these other ones i kind of remember seeing um so maybe city mayor is the only thing new i don't know anyway we're just going to do a random on this um i think in my playthrough my solo playthrough I, I became the hydro engineer um which was pretty nice but you know it's nothing crazy so let's go ahead and hit random I'm just going to leave the company logo as is. Brazil has its own logo, so we'll do that. Uh, we're going to do random mystery, I think. I think the only one I've actually played through fully uh, back when the game was released was Wildfire, which, if I remember, was, you know, fun. Um, so we'll just leave it on random and see what we get. Rival colonies, uh, I'm just going to leave it at default of three. Well, I guess you have three. You can not add additional ones, but we can actually pick who we want to be um, our colonists or rival colonies. So that's another thing that's new with the space race um, rule set and everything. So game rules, we're not going to go with any of these, but these are new. Um, I don't recall, well, new from, from release. I don't recall this as being a thing, but maybe it is. 
I don't know. I can't remember. It's been a while since I played the release one. Uh, but anyway, there is a new one here. <laughs> so apparently with uh, the Space Race, this was added in, this new tech variety. Uh, but we're not going to we're not gonna do that. Are randomized during different playthroughs on the same map? Unlike. So yeah, so this was a recent change. Um, this was how I guess it initially happened in release. And this is what I remember, that techs were randomized in general. Um, and now they're sort of set on specific maps. You're going to get the same text on the same map. So, um, sort of like if you wanted to play the same map as me, you would get the same text unless I had that selected, which is interesting. We're not going to keep that in there because we're going to go randomize on a map sort of thing. So I'm not going to know what the texts are on the map I'm going to play. So, um, and yeah, let's go ahead. We'll hit next. Uh, we're going to pick what we want in um this i think you know i'm not gonna rename this ship that's fine um i'm actually kind of happy with this setup uh in my test game i went with this and i was i was entirely fine with it um i would like the rc explorer uh, admittedly um but i found in my in my solo playthrough just to get a hang of things that it wasn't a huge issue a huge priority in fact the rc transport comes in very handy um in the beginning of the game when you're gathering up resources so i much prefer probably to keep the rc transport and what i'll do is in one of our next resupply ones we'll we'll get the rc explorer down and by then we should have a number of anomalies that we can send it out for but in the beginning of the game it's you know it's hit or miss you have to scan you have to get the anomalies and mainly the explorer just sits idle until those happen whereas the rc transport can get things going right off the bat um uh, and yeah, as far as everything else, we could probably bring less orbital probes, but doesn't free up too much space. Uh, we could probably bring in a couple extra drones, but no, I'm, I'm going to like just keeping the orbital probes. So I'm going to keep everything default. That's going to be fine. So let's go ahead. We're going to hit next. And now we get to select our proper location here. Um, so they have sort of preset ones. But I always like to just sort of randomize a little bit and just try to get something of relative difficulty, but not super crazy um, and sort of even, you know, even-ish on these things. So this would be a difficulty of 320%. Uh, we're relatively flat here. We've got decent, I mean, nothing, nothing crazy. We may be short on water and metals a little bit. Good concrete here. Um, meteors, dust storms, I, I kind of want something a little bit more challenging since we took a sort of an easier, easier thing on, um, oh shoot, an easier sponsor. Water, good, steep topography, not great, dust devils, I kind of want meteors, to be honest. You know, the dust storms and everything was this 305 again me there was part of me that wanted to do this off camera just to find a, a good spot um, to ultimately go very low meteor strikes dust devils and dust storms uh, fairly high everything else concrete me again I don't want to make it too easy but at the same time, I kind of want meteors because they lead to anomalies. Cold waves kind of suck. That just means more more stuff that we have to deal with. Um, again, I wanted to go a little bit higher in general. So leave it at like 310. 330, what do we got? Nope, I don't want cold waves. This isn't bad. 310, relatively flat. We'll get some... See, I don't want cold waves. 340, relatively flat. Water, metals. Uh, this is sort of similar to what we had before, but eh, I'm, I'm tired of hitting the random. So we're going to go with this. If you want to play the same map as me, just go ahead and plug in the kit custom and plug in these coordinates, and you will be in Arabia Terra as well. Um... And so we're going to have to deal with a lot of meteors and a lot of dust storms. But like I said, meteors are, are pretty good. Not too bad. Um, 
because they do lead to uh, anomalies. The other disasters are cold waves. You know, we have to set up an actual heater to prevent you know our people from freezing. Um, and the dust storms kind of just hinder your power temporarily. They're not too bad. They do require Welcome maintenance and so Mars. on and so forth to, to be dealt with. But that's that's it. All right. So we got the psychologist. Excellent. Actually, I've never, I'm not sure what that gives. So we'll have to look at our mission profile to see what the psychologist gives. But my guess is we got a boost to sanity and other things. So that should be interesting to play with. Let's pause the game right off the bat. Um and check out our mission profile. So I, I believe this is new. Um, so we do, we have all these like, um, uh, what do you call it? Milestones or objectives for our mission goals uh, for our sponsor. So land a colonist on Mars by Soul 15. So basically we got a whole bunch of signs as long as we get people to Mars by Soul 15. Fairly easy to do. We'll certainly get that done. The rare metals is a bit more complicated, but again, with our rare metals refinery, if we can get that up right away, very easy to easy to do. In my solo playthrough, I didn't actually get this because I didn't realize that was a goal until Soul 29, and uh, it took me probably two more souls to get there. So once this comes online, it's pretty darn easy to get. Um, and then so on and so forth. We have a number of different things. If we get four domes of spires, we get a fusion reactor prefab, celebrity, all this stuff. Very good stuff. Anywho, um, commander profile, psychologist, colonists recover five additional sanity while resting in their homes. Pretty good. Because, uh, you know, sanity plays some aspect of the game that I'm not entirely sure. I think they can, like, get hearth sick and don't go home or go crazy or break or, I don't know, something like that. Uh, bonus tech, we get the behavioral shaping, so we unlock the sanatorium spire, which treats colonist flaws right away. That's pretty good, because the sanatorium is nice to have, uh, because you can start getting rid of uh, bad traits. So, actually, that's not a bad start. I don't know if we're going to get the sanatorium down immediately, but soon after. Okay, so, we pause the game, we're going to take a look at our environment here. Um, we are elevated to start with. Now, we could... Get rid of that and look elsewhere um, with our little orbital probes. But I see no reason. We got an anomaly here, which we can't research. Uh, we got a high concrete deposit here, high concrete deposit there. No water, which is kind of unfortunate. But again, we do come with a prefab. Um, uh, oh, whoa. Apparently, we don't come with a pre-moisture evaporator. All right, well, we'll send that. We have enough money. We'll, we'll get a reply ship, or a, uh, not a reply ship, uh, supply, resupply ship, and get that one of those down so we can start collecting water. Again, our goal is to land people by Soul 15, which is, you know, easily done. So let's go ahead. We are going to take our orbital probe, and I'm just going to, I'm going to plan on being in this area. Hopefully, we get an elevation boost to our power. Um, which will be nice. So that's that. I'm going to go here. And that's a shame. Um, and let's go over here. And can we get any metal? Third time's a charm. Ugh, nothing. Oh, well, that's a shame. We, are, we got a lot of concrete, though. So that's something. So let's go ahead. We're going to put down a, a little, uh, our little ship here. Um, and I'm sure, I'm not really sure where we're going to go fully, but I think for, for starters, we can just go ahead and plop down, um, you know what, I might just plop down over here. Well, the problem with that is, um, I want to try to get, because we have a lot of uh, metal resources, which is really nice in this area. So, you know what, that's fine. We're going to go sort of in between these two areas here. At least for our ship. We'll probably plan on a dome. Um, see, that's the, that's the only thing. Alright, you know what? I'm going to try to keep towards these rocks with my, my with my ship. Because I think I might put a dome in over here. Um, so, we're going to try to like squeeze in them near these, these rocks. I don't like that. Alright, how about right here? Yeah, we're a little outside the range of our drones in that concrete to the right, but we just need to get the concrete in there to some degree. So if we look at that, 
See, this is what I like. I like to plan things out. Um, <clears throat> infrastructure, production, concrete extractor. So how do we want this to go? Uh, that's 2639. Yeah, I mean, we could do something like this. Plop that down there and then land over here. And our drones can still actually access it. So yeah, I like it. Uh, I'm going to try to like scoot you in here as close to the rocks as possible um, without having to do anything there. Uh, because you, even though we could probably build there, it's going to be kind of annoying. Uh, oh, yes. So let's set up our scans. Ooh, pull out. Go there, go there, all the way. And I just like to do sort of a circular pattern as best we can. Do we want to start over here? Something like that. That'll be fine. Um, and boy, we need to put a cut in the video already. Sheesh. Well, this episode was all about the setup. Um, all right. So let's land this uh, bugger here and start gathering up some resources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just throw down a couple storage areas. We'll get some... Do we want to do a universal storage? 30 units is not much. I usually do start with that, though. Come on. Oh, right, the, the base game is, the base speed is super slow. Uh, let's put you here. And then we got ourselves this RC transport. I'm going to have this guy start collecting a lot of these resources, especially the ones that are far away. So if you collect this, create transport route, <clears throat> it's now we have this like area here where this guy is going to actually generate, um, or not generate, but start collecting resources within that defined area. And we can actually set it to, to whatever. Um, I'm going to specifically tell it to gather up metal in this area. So all these little bits and pieces will get there. And then you are going to just transport it over here. And so he's going to go gather up as much metal as he can. And then grab, uh, dump it off in this uh, stockpile over here. Uh, so what I'm going to do though, because he's going to bring over a ton of metal. Uh, I'm actually going to create a specific metal drop-off point right there. And that's going to be fine. Find water on Mars, find water on Mars, blah, 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 blah. No research. All right, let's get our research going, and then we'll put in a brief cut here. Oh, that's really nice. Autonomous sensors right off the bat. Um, and as well as the rocket fuel. Well, well, well. Uh, moisture Vaporator upgrade. You know what? I'm going to go Advanced Martian Engineering. Engines, I should say. Do we want to do that? Probably. There's something to be said about the autonomous sensors. Getting that right off the bat. Oh, man. So good. I'm sure there's probably better starts, but, I mean, these are both really enticing to get as quickly as possible because this would require us to, to produce far less fuel. Uh, to get our um, shuttles moving at a relatively good rate. But the autonomous sensors are good. Now, I'm going to go into... I'm going to get this first, because this is more important. we got to get those uh, that, those ships moving faster and faster. So go into that. We'll build one autonomous sensor um, right off the bat. And I'm just going to queue up low G drives and just do that. So I have something always researching. We may change that around. Uh, down the line, but we'll have to we'll have to deal with it. But there's our sanatorium, so we could build that in our first dome, which honestly might not be a bad thing. Okay, so we got that situated. I think we are. We're gonna go ahead and put a cut in the video, and uh, we've got ourselves landed and we got things started. But uh, we haven't really explored too too much. Um, but we'll do that next episode. Thanks. So thanks everyone for watching. Hope you're going to enjoy the series. If you do, by all means, hit that like button. It really helps out with new videos. And uh, if you want to see more content, I strongly encourage you to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to be notified uh, when these videos go live, by all means, hit that notification button as well. Otherwise, we will see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.